The lightning, wind, and rain all dance to their own symphony as the darkness engulfs us. Unease floods a room when the thunder announces itself so proudly. I smile as the scene awakens a twinge of nostalgia that bubbles excitedly in the pit of my stomach. My mind then harkens back to Typhoon Milenio. The Typhoon Milenio who hit my home city of Bacoor hard. The Typhoon Milenio whose might forces me to recall vague memories that I'd rather forget. I remember how the winds howled as they tore everything down. How the branches from nearby trees broke off so easily and how those branches threatened to shatter the windows of my home each time they struck them with a loud noise that rang more fiercely than thunder. The goosebumps pricking my skin now remind me just how callously Milenio trapes on, leaving so much grief in its wake. I remember how the night lasted for an eternity and how as a child, I had feared that the sun itself had fallen victim to the storm. Only two memories of that night remain crisp. The first was of my father, who, for one reason or another, left the safety of our home, leaving through a back door that nearly flew off when he'd thrown it open. My mother screamed, her voice rising above the chaos as she held me and my siblings close. She yelled for him, begging him to come back. The second was simply a haunting image. The mischievous grin of a plastic pumpkin. If I close my eyes now, I can still see it drifting against a gray backdrop. Even in my faintest memory, I can still see it floating farther and farther away from me. Its grin taunting me from a distance. 2006. That is when Milenio had ravaged my home. A little more than a decade has passed. By this time, it should be nothing more than a distant memory. Yet here we are. For the longest time, I felt a certain comfort in storms. Not only in their ferocity, but also in the emotions they force out of people. The fear and confusion in their eyes, it simply takes my breath away. But for as monstrous as that sounds, I do have a reason. One that is admittedly petty considering all things, but one that I've come to terms with. When I see how the storm devours everything around me and how hopeless everyone around me looks, I feel normal. The outside finally reflected the inside. A tempest of thoughts, a hurricane of voices, a flood of anxieties. Almost every day, amidst a calm flow of jovial voices, chatting about one thing or another, I sit still, flinching at the sound of laughter, feeling jealousy and confusion bubble into disgusting sludge-like liquid uh, bubbling in my stomach. Almost every day, I clench my teeth with enough force to chip them. I focus all of my anger on them. A petty, vindictive entitlement to vengeance I wish didn't awaken every time I saw a smile. There is a crowd of voices scratching dully at the back of my mind. A sound more akin to static. If you listen closely, 
you will hear the chorus cursing, rambling, and asking why? Why doesn't everyone else hold their breaths until their lungs burn? Why don't they say I'm sorry like a prayer as though they would be forgiven for the crime of existing? Why don't their eyes grow tired and glossy from all the tears they desperately try to blink away? Why? 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 Why can't they feel the lightning that always burns my windpipes? Why can't they see that everything around me is falling apart? Why can't their bodies burn the way mine does, trying to save itself from the freezing cold that I'm drowning in? Why am I still here? On some days, the questions die down, making room for sounds. The rise of air bubbles, the snapping of a neck, the ring of a gunshot, and the thrashing of a body as it drowns. Those days, I find it harder to sleep, despite my own tiredness. If I'm quiet enough, and if I press my head against a pillow, I will hear the pain cry of an injured animal. If I'm awake enough those nights, I will realize that the cries came from my own throat. Some days, everything fades away. Those days, my ears rest, but my mind still wanders. I will find myself trapped in my childhood home, alone, as the storm's power reaches its zenith. Branches from nearby trees come loose, and finally they shatter the windows of my home and leave me at the mercy of the storms. But some days, I just sit there and watch as the orange light drifts to the horizon. But I know as I translate these words and images into, into words, you can't see the storm raging around me. I know by the time I speak these words, I've already created tens and thousands of drafts Five on paper, ten on my computer, thousands under my breath, and uh, countless times on the edge of my tongue. But I'm going to be completely honest and admit that I probably don't have the skill or vocabulary to even paint a fraction of the picture I want to show you. Someone once told me that the written word was simply a bad translation of spoken because you can never truly hear the speaker as you read the sentence. No matter how many times your mind reels through that sentence, you will never hear the exact inflections, the pitter of syllables as they tumble out, and the, how the speaker's voice trembles with every word that tries to rush out their throat but dies on their tongue. If that is the gap between spoken and written, then can you imagine the chasm between thought and language? Even so, I want to tell you to tell someone to be honest with them, to just ask for help without veiling these words. But I simply think that I don't deserve it. I've always spoken in metaphors, idioms, and riddles, hoping that would make light of it. I thought if I spoke plainly, the weight of these words would simply feel far too heavy. There is a horde of thoughts caught in my throat, swimming and wading through a sea, desperately trying to reach that orange light that steadily bobs away from me. I just know that one day it will disappear beyond the horizon. 
sealing away with all the hopes and dreams that I thought it would keep safe. One day, it will sink beneath the debris wrought by the storm if I don't reach it. But my legs aren't strong enough. Every day, the floodwaters push me back. Time and again, I trip, I fall, I fall, and I think to myself, I should just let myself drown. But I know if I just, if I could only reach that pumpkin, then the blue sky I love will come back. The storm wouldn't swallow me up. But every day, I feel myself slowly sinking into the floodwaters. My legs aren't strong enough to carry me. Every day, I think, if only I weren't alone, I could reach it.